In this video, I discuss perpetuities and how the valuation of a perpetuity can be used to derive the valuation of an annuity. Before watching this video, you should already be familiar with the basic concepts of present value and future value. Let's start with a simple example. Let's say that you are able to invest at a risk-free annual rate of 5% forever. If you invest $100 in this account, you will receive a $5 return each year forever. Now, let's put these $5 interest payments on a timeline. Note that these payments last forever, assuming the 5% interest rate continues to prevail into the future. What is the present value of the $5 interest payments? We could write this as a standard present value problem, as I've done here. On the left-hand side of the equation, I have the present value of the perpetuity, PVP for short. On the right-hand side, I am discounting all future $5 payments at a 5% interest rate. But the summation never ends, so this is a calculation that I need to think about carefully. On some reflection, you might realize that the promise of these $5 payments forever when interest rates are 5% is worth $100. Why? Because if I invest $100 today at a 5% interest rate, I will generate an infinite stream of $5 payments each year. This logic is sound, but how can I prove this mathematically? There's a clever trick that we can use to solve the problem mathematically. Let's start with the infinite sum. I can multiply both sides of this equation by 1.05, or 1 plus the 5% interest rate. Notice how things cancel on the right-hand side of the equation? For each $5 payment, the discounting is reduced by one year, or in other words, the exponent associated with 1.05 and the denominator of each term is reduced by 1. I end up with 1.05 times PVP on the left-hand side of this equation. On the right-hand, start with the $5. Notice the remaining portion of the right-hand side of the equation is the infinite summation of $5 discounted at 5% forever. This is where the clever trick comes into play. Notice that this summation is the same problem that we started with so we can merely substitute our abbreviation for the present value of a perpetuity, or PVP, for this infinite summation. Next, subtract PVP from both sides. After doing so, we are left with 0 0.05 times PVP, which equals $5. Divide both sides by the interest rate, or 5%. This leaves you with the $5 annual payment divided by the interest rate of 5% which is $100. Of course, as we discussed before, the valuation of this perpetuity makes sense because an investment of $100 today will generate a $5 payment forever. Now, what about the more general case, where we have a perpetuity that pays a constant cash flow C forever when you have an opportunity to invest at an interest rate R forever? In general, the present value of the perpetuity will be simply C, the periodic cash flow, divided by R, the prevailing interest rate, as is shown on the board. Now, I realize that the assumption that you are earning a constant interest rate on your investments forever is not realistic. Anyone who pays passing attention to financial market knows that the amount of interest offered on a savings account, charged for a home mortgage, or a car loan changes over time. Nonetheless, this simple example will be useful in thinking about the general problem of how to value a long-lived, or in this case, infinite cash flow stream. If you continue to study finance, this simplification will be quite useful for thinking about a number of valuation problems, including how economists think about the valuation of stocks. Moreover, we can use the perpetuity valuation formula to value an annuity, which has many real-world applications. Let's start with the perpetuity we just discussed, which has a constant cash flow C forever. We now know the present value of this cash flow is C divided by R, the prevailing interest rate. Recall that an annuity is a fixed number of cash flow payments over a fixed number of years, as depicted on the timeline on the bottom. The present value of an annuity is provided by the formula behind me. While it may not be obvious yet, we can derive the valuation of an annuity using the formula to value a perpetuity. To see this, let's engage in the following thought experiment. Let's start with a perpetuity where the first cash payment occurs one year from today. 
we will label this perpetuity with a red A on the board. We are now going to subtract the cash flows associated with a second perpetuity, B. But the second perpetuity does not begin paying the promised cash flow, C, until year T plus 1 as depicted on this timeline. You can think of this as entering one contract, call it A, where you buy the right to receive a constant cash payment forever, beginning next year. And a second contract, call it B, where you promise to pay a constant cash payment C forever, beginning in year T plus 1. Now, note what happens when we calculate the difference between A and B, or A minus B. The resulting cash flow stream is that of an annuity, with the first cash flow beginning, being received in year 1, and the last cash flow being received in year T. To see this, let's look at the cash flows in a few years. In year 0, neither A nor B promises a cash flow, so the difference is 0. In year 1, you begin receiving your promised cash flow C from A, but are not yet obligated to begin paying the cash flow C from B. Thus, the difference of A minus B is merely C in year 1. This calculation is the same from year 2 through year T. However, in year T plus 1, things change. Though you continue to receive a payment from A, you are now also obligated to begin paying a cash flow C as promised on the second perpetuity, B. Thus, the difference between the two perpetuities, or A minus B, is zero beginning in year T plus 1, and in every remaining year. Now let's pause and think about the last row here. Note that A minus B yields a cash flow payment C that begins in one year and ends in year T. This is precisely how we define a fixed annuity, which makes a promised cash flow payment C for a fixed number of periods T. So we should be able to value this annuity by thinking about the valuations of the two perpetuities that generate the cash flow. As a starting point, let's value the two perpetuities A and B in this problem. We know that the present value of perpetuity A is merely C over R. The present value of perpetuity B requires two calculations. First, note that in year T, the future value of the perpetuity B is C over R. Why? Because when I am in year T, standing in year T, I know that perpetuity B will begin paying in one year, or year T plus 1. I also know that the value of a perpetuity that begins paying in one year is merely C over R. It's important to note that the perpetuity formula values a perpetuity one year prior to the first cash payment. The second step in this calculation is to calculate the present value of the perpetuity by discounting the value of the perpetuity in period T and additional t periods, or dividing by 1 plus r raised to the power of t. We now have the present value of our second perpetuity, b, as of period 0, as is depicted on the board. Now we can pull this all together to calculate the value of an annuity. If the difference in the cash flows between a and b in each year represent that of an annuity, it follows that the difference in the present values of a and b represent the present value of an annuity. Thus, we start with the present value of perpetuity A, C over R. We subtract the present value of perpetuity B, which yields the present value of A minus B. Now, this is not quite the annuity valuation formula that I presented earlier, but if we simplify the resulting formula by factoring out C over R, we end up with a simplified version of the annuity formula. To sum up, you should now be familiar with the valuation of a perpetuity and an annuity. In financial economics, the perpetuity formula has wide applications for developing theories about how we should value long-lived investments like stocks. The annuity formula has wide practical applications. Take a few minutes, think about how you might be able to use these formula to analyze financial decisions that many people face in their lives.